Hello, and welcome to Liddy Hawk Designs. Today, we're going to make a crochet sports team coffee cozy or coffee sleeve. We're going to make it in the colors we want to make it in. If you're new to crochet, you can follow along. If you're brand new to crochet, you can learn how to make a cozy as your first project. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I came to the pattern. And by the end, you will be able to adapt this pattern to any size coffee cup. For instance, these are both Starbucks coffee cups. They're both 16 fluid ounces. This one is for hot coffee. This one is for cold and it's slightly bigger, but using my pattern and the principles I'm going to show you, you can easily adapt your cozy to any size coffee cup. Most coffee cups taper very gradually and slightly the way these two do. So with worst of weight yarn and a size H8 five millimeter crochet hook, this pattern can adapt to probably any coffee cup. All you have to do is change the number of stitches that you begin with. Now, as you can see here, this is a Pokemon themed <laughs> coffee cozy or coffee sleeve. I made this for a friend years ago and I thought, you know, since basketball season is in full swing and I live in LA, it's appropriate that we convert this to sports team colors. You can pick any colors you like. Worsted weight yarn is what we're working with. That's a size four yarn. What I have here is Caron Simply Soft in colors iris, sunshine, and white. We need our H8 five millimeter crochet hook, tapestry needle, and stitch marker, scissors, and the pattern. The free pattern link is in the description below, but you don't have to have the pattern in front of you. You can just follow along with me and that will be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off. As you can see here, we've got a nice gradual increase that matches our coffee cup. We're gonna start with our bottom color. I'm going to place my yellow at the bottom. So starting with color A or whatever color you want to appear at the bottom, We're going to leave a nice long tail for weaving in the end. And then I'm just gonna cross my yarn here and go in with my index finger and my thumb and create a slip knot. And for this size coffee cup, we're going to chain 33. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 4, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Now we're going to join. Be careful not to twist your stitches. The easiest way to do that is just to take your chain and smooth it out like this. straight, right? So it's perfectly straight. And then bring it right up to your crochet hook. And we're going to slip stitch, chain one, and place a marker. Now we're going to single crochet 32 in every chain around. Now, as you can see, one, two, three, your chain spaces are pretty visible. And the first one right here 
is pretty easy to get into, but as you go, your stitches might get a little tight. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to count one, two, and on our second stitch next to the one we're about to work, we're going to hold on to it. And by placing my middle finger and my thumb on it and holding it, I'm keeping its shape because if you don't do that, it can really tighten each chain as you go, as it pulls yarn. So I find that's just the really easy way to start is to hold on to the next chain and go in. Now there's three, you can see there's three strands of thread here. We want to go under the top two. So under the top two gen and be gentle just to be patient take your time and then single crochet one and then i'm going to hold on to the next chain that i'm going to work and then go into the below the top two strands and single crochet and just keep doing that around And as I can see, it's they're already starting to tighten up a little bit, but holding them keeps the tension pretty uniform. And that last one's definitely small, but there we go. 32. Now we're going to slip stitch into our marker space, chain one, and place our marker. So we've got a nice solid first row of single crochet stitches. 
And if you want to work on something a little bigger, what you would do is you would just chain as many that will fit around the base of your coffee cup without a lot of pulling and stretching so comfortably. Uh, that's how I came to the number 32 for this coffee cup. In fact, I'm just going to loosen this a little bit. So I changed 32 and just holding the first and last chain, I just wrapped it around the cup like this, fit comfortably without me having to pull it. It wasn't too big, perfect. So that's how I knew to chain 32. And you always chain one more because that last loop on your hook does not count as a single crochet chain. If you were to find this were 40 comfortably around the base of this cup, then you would chain 41. And then you would slip stitch into the first chain space and work your pattern exactly like we're working ours here. Round two, we're just gonna single crochet 32 all the way around. And then slip stitch into our marker space, chain one, place marker. Now we're going to increase round three, single crochet 15. One, two, three. Now we're going to increase two single crochet. So one, and then right into the same stitch, two. This creates our gradual taper. And then it says repeat from asterisk to asterisk. So single crochet, 15. And then in the last two single crochet. So we increase by single crocheting two. Slip stitch in a marker space, chain one, place marker. And this is the basis for the rest of the pattern. And that is every third row we're going to increase it creates this nice, slow taper. 
and then we just switch out our colors when we get where we want to in the pattern. So for instance, if you wanted to cover the entire cup from top to bottom, you just chain however many will fit comfortably around the bottom without pulling or stretching or being too many. So you just figure out how many, an even number is appropriate because then you can divide that by two and figure out where your increases should be. But you'd start down here and then every third row you increase by two stitches. Figure out where you want your colors to switch out. Pretty easy. And I want to go ahead and apologize for this burn on my hand. I have been making Neapolitan pizza. <laughs> so um, yeah, round four through five, single crochet 34. So we've worked our increase and now we need two rows where we just single crochet into every stitch around. Slip stitch in a marker space, chain one, place marker. Round five, single crochet 34. Slip stitch in a marker space, chain one, place marker. Round six, single crochet 16. Then two single crochet, so we're going to increase and then repeat. Increase. Slip stitch into marker space. Chain one, place marker. Row seven is single crochet 36.
slip stitch in a marker space, chain one, place marker. Round eight is a little different. It reads single crochet 36. So we're going to do that. And then at the end, we're going to join color B. slip stitch into marker space. And then with color B, in my case white, leaving a nice long tail for weaving in the end, I'm gonna chain one and place my marker. That's a little loose right now, so just be careful that you don't start pulling your tail through. Now there's the stitch I just used for my slip stitch. This is the next one. So I'm just going to go in gently, make sure I'm pulling on the right side here and just tighten everything down and single crochet one, two. If you need to go back and make sure everything's tightened down real good. And then it's our increased row, so three. Two single crochets, so we're going to increase and repeat. And we're going to switch to color C. So slip stitch. And with C, we're going to chain one, leaving a nice, leaving a nice long tail for weaving in the ends and place marker. Again, we have a loose stitch here, a couple of loose stitches, but that's okay. Just make sure you don't pull your tail through. Just gently locate your longest bit of thread. Identify the next stitch you need to work. It's right here. And we'll just gently pull that through, tighten down. Single crochet one, two, and then just go back and make sure everything is snug. Round 10 through 11, single crochet 38. And this is our last color, so you don't even need to follow along with me anymore. But you can if you would like.
slip stitch, chain one, place marker. I'm going to go ahead and cut color B. Leaving a nice long tail. And this is our pattern. We have the basis for the beginning and the rest. And in fact, this video has chapter markers. So I'm going to set chapter markers for the rest of the rows with the instructions on what to do. And then we are going to meet back up at the very end when we bind off and weave in the ends. Round 12, single crochet 18, increase with two single crochet and repeat around. Round 13, single crochet 40. Round 14, single crochet 40. Round 15, single crochet 19, two single crochet repeat. Round 16, single crochet 42. Round 17, single crochet 42, and we'll meet up to bind off at the end. Now we're at the end of round 17. Slip stitch into marker space, bind off. So leaving a nice long tail. Cut my thread and then just pull it through the loop and tighten it. Beautiful. Now we just need to weave in our ends. So we turn it inside out. This is our wrong side. And with our tapestry needle, We're going to weave the tail into the wrong side. So this is the top. And it should really lay down flat like this. Otherwise, there's going to be a little lip there. So I'm just going to go into the stitch next to it. So that's nice and flat now. And weave this tail in methodically into the back. Just the back stitches. We want to hide this. Looks pretty good. And you can weave in as much of it as you like. This is really sturdy, so I'm not going to go too far. I ended up with kind of a short tail on this one. And if that ever happens, you know, there is a trick where if your tail's really short, you can always insert your needle and then put your tail through to pull it through. And you can do that multiple times, even with a very short tail. I've run into that issue before and it works great. Since there's only one row of white, I'm gonna go with the tail on one side and then the other. I'm going to crisscross them. And since we're using acrylic yarn, 
You should be able to just throw this in the washing machine if it gets dirty. I prefer hand washing anything handmade. It's just, it's less likely to fall apart if you're gentle with handmade items. Gentle soap. And it's the same down here. We've got a little lip. We just need to make sure we go in at an angle so that the line is even. So like right here. Looks good. Feel free to always undo your work, redo anything you want to redo until you're happy. That's the most important thing, is that you're happy with it and it's sturdy. And there we have a gorgeous Lakers themed <laughs> coffee sleeve, coffee cozy. I'm just going to see what it fits on this like. Yeah, so this is really strong. It doesn't stretch a lot. It stretches a little. You would basically start, if you wanted to make a full sleeve for the 16 ounce Starbucks cold coffee cup, You'd start with this pattern, but then you would just multiply your stitches end wherever you want to end and then always even number of stitches, but then an odd number of rows so that you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight above your middle line, depending of course on how many lines. You could always put two in the middle and end on an even row that way. And there we have it. A beautiful Lakers themed coffee sleeve, coffee cozy, whatever team colors you want to use. It's just an easy, fun crochet project that sports fans can always appreciate. Team spirit. Next time, I think I'm going to do a knit version of this. Knitting in the round is a lot of fun. Thank you so much for following along this tutorial with me. Until next time.